with ambition uh, comes possibility. So um, it's been a minute since we've, we've <laughs> caught up and uh, you know, you're always sort of on the cutting edge as well of, of art and you know, generative AI as well as, as Web3. Um, what are some of your reflections at this current moment in time? Well, it's been a, it's been a tough couple of years. Uh, in the bear market, but as always, even even in the events that we've now done, um, many of them, like Wow Summit was the last one. Uh, yeah, it was a we were a media partner for them as well, just a couple of days ago. Uh, incredible event, and they did they did an amazing job. It was slightly more quiet than usual, but what I enjoy about the bear markets is that you have less of the hypey type people. It's the real builders who kind of go through the bear markets, and especially throughout this time and. I'm sure next year, year we're going to start picking up, picking back up again. NFTs are not dead; they're coming back in the next cycle, and hopefully, a little bit more mature and a little bit more wise way. Um, and so, so this is a, a, a peculiar question to ask someone that's more of an artist, and you've been into digital art, um, you know, for a long time. I, you know, you shared your perspective on the history of art and how it's sort of evolved to this point. But when you look at sort of the practical use cases for, you know, verifiable digital assets at, at the end of the day, are you still uh, super excited about the real world utility of like uh, tokenizing something like uh, cars? I know, I know you have that project with Dr. Mawan. Or are there other use cases that you think are uh, more promising or is it just a combination of all of the above or none of the above? <laughs> well, it's a combination. Um... I mean, um, you know, how we utilized NFTs uh, for the first run of it, I'm not too big of a fan of. Um, I understand that that's what happened to ICOs, but ICOs essentially didn't go anywhere. It's just we got wiser in how we implement them. Um, but yeah, we, we have, a, have plans on essentially that digital artwork becoming a part of your identity. It's no longer a painting on your wall. It's something that you transform into a variety of different forms. Uh, and we're innovating how we sell the IP and how we help uh, with our partners, kind of our clients and collectors to become um, part of this new wave and experiment with us because it's, it's difficult to see what is going to take off, what is going to be uh, the popular thing that we don't know, but we have a very solid vision of where we're going in order to kind of showcase, okay, so here's your car, this is what a villa could look like, this is what the metaverse version of that villa is like, uh, doesn't this jet look cool, you know, and, and all of these things we have. Uh, but there's another side to it, which is, for example, this one project that I'm working with, Dr. Narisa uh, uh, from Kogope, is that her actual real passion is uh, these orphanages in Thailand. So wow. what we did is that, <clears throat> because what really got me into this space to begin with was Andreas Antonopoulos videos and the Bad Crypto Podcast guys, but in particular, the... the the Andreas Antonopoulos when he said that there's about 3.5 billion people in the world without a bank account. So I started thinking about different implementations. So what we did with Dr. Nerissa and this heavenly home in Thailand, which is a kids orphanage place, is that we got the kids to draw some uh, crayons and things like that. And then we digitized them. We're going to have the professional animator turn them into NFTs and then put them on an international marketplace. And if we have some support, then if and when some child's uh, NFT sells, that kid directly gets some money onto their crypto wallet, as well as the orphanage itself gets some operational funds. So imagine what your post... Not, not like the NCAA. It took them like uh, about 80 years to decide to, to allow the athletes to get you know compensation for their value. So, I mean, that's an incredible lesson to, to teach you know orphans at such a young age that there is value in everything that they create in the world. It's just, I, I know you're gonna explain more, but I, I had to stop you because it's just so such a beautiful use case. Right? The views and opinions expressed on Edge of NFT reflect solely those views and opinions of the show hosts and its guests. Please make sure to do your own research. Our show is not financial advice. You understand that you are using any and all information available on or through this podcast at your own risk. Whenever making financial decisions, we recommend doing your own research and talking to your accountant for financial advice. 
From time to time, we may feature sponsored content on the show for which we receive value, and we may share links for which we receive a commission if you make a purchase through one of those links. Refer to our website, www.edgeofnft.com, for our full disclaimer, terms and conditions, and privacy policy.